As some of you may undoubtedly be aware, I've recently had the chance to acquire this, a facsimile of a rifleman's uniform from the early 1800s. I thought that it might be interesting to conduct a short skirmish video to break it in, thereby assessing some of the more obvious components and their effect on my shooting. Of course, the rifle I'll use for this is my 1800 pattern Baker rifle. It's shooting a 594 round ball with a patch of 0 0.022 in thickness. This atop a load of 95 grains of 2F powder. Powder's dry. Let's go do some shooting.
There are a few elements of this shoot that stand apart from other outings with the baker, and they are all a result of wearing the uniform and kit shown here. The first is the addition of a more historically correct ball bag. Previously, I have used a combination of pouches to carry bullets, patches, and priming powder, in addition to a short starter. For use with this, the complete uniform, however, this wasn't perhaps appropriate. Based on descriptions by Colonel Norcott dating from 1816 and found in DeWitt Bailey's British Military Flintlock Rifles, I fashioned a reproduction. With a body of soft leather gathered with a thong and topped with a flap and leather button, it was intended to hold 30 rounds, which were pre-patched. Now I haven't arrived at the best way to do this, so I used loose patches for this shoot, both of which, bullet and patch, were contained within the pouch. Please pardon the somewhat ahistorical detail here. This pouch seemed to perform well. The style of closing with the thong allowed for the main flap to remain open while maintaining the security of the contents for rapid loading. Even during all my flopping around on the ground, I didn't lose one bullet or patch. The second element introduced here was the sword. The blade is some 22 inches in length and hangs conspicuously down the left side. There is evidence of an angled frog in service which would greatly mitigate the otherwise unwieldiness. With a straight frog such as mine, as you might understand, the sword hangs up on the ground when kneeling and can get in the way while navigating across broken ground. The next is most interesting, the stock. Now, this isn't the rifle stock. Those familiar with the Napoleonic and early Victorian era will undoubtedly be aware of the use of this item. Made of relatively stout leather and contoured to a degree to fit closely around the neck, it was a ubiquitous feature of the uniform of the British Army at the time. Reasons for it seem to indicate that it was seen as a form of neck protection, as well an implement to ensure correct posture, keeping the head and shoulders square and to the front. I made mine from stout but not overly stiff leather and, with the lack of brass furniture at hand, I closed it with a leather thong. Going into this shoot, I thought that the aspect of wearing a restrictive neck collar, for lack of a better term, would negatively impact the shooting, especially in the alternate positions used in this shoot. I actually found it to impact very little in regards to loading and firing. Would I prefer not to wear? Of course. The chest pocket in the jacket was another historical feature. It was intended for the flask, and allowed it to be carried in a handy yet safe spot, while keeping the flask out of the way when not in use. The final piece of kit that I thought might impact shooting was the shako or regimental cap. Made of shellac felt, it is not particularly heavy and fits my head quite nicely. It is not without its adverse effects though. It's not provided with a chin strap, and thus, with normal tension on the head, I found its balance on the top of the head to be somewhat imperfect. This is more an aspect of the inherent design of the cap rather than its quality. As it was, it did fall off once during one of the more dynamic aspects of the shoot. The large square peak in rifles fashion did not get in the way and was no bigger than a modern baseball cap's peak. It's from Jim Keller in Ontario, Canada. He makes all kinds of historical military accoutrements including a most complete range of British and Empire shackles. The quality is superb. There was one aspect that did not make it into this shoot, the knapsack. Of typical Napoleonic style, research points to an envelope type, which is unstiffened. Once I acquire a pattern, it will feature in a video, and comment will certainly be passed on its effect on shooting and loading. I'd like to thank the 2nd Battalion 95th Rifles for use of some of their photographs. They are a reenacting and living history group out of the UK and set the bar in research and recreation of period uniforms and equipment. Thank you very much. They happen also to run a very informative forum. The link will be in the description below. I'd also like to mention the sling used on the baker for this shoot. It's a product of Lawrence White at Shed Time Leatherwork. Lawrence runs a small cottage industry in the UK. He deals in a multiple of eras, and apart from his work in more ancient eras, such as the Roman or pre-Roman times, also reproduces accoutrements as found in Pierre Turner's Soldier's Accoutrements of the British Army. 
slings, frogs, and belts are all reproduced with exacting standards. Of peculiar note is the style of sling specific to this rifle. It is of the rifle's pattern, of which, according to Pierre Turner, there was only one pattern right up to the adoption of a sling made of webbing in the 20th century. Thank you very much, Lawrence. The sling is a fine addition to the collection. If you'd like to support the channel, please stop by our Patreon page. The link is in the description below.